IoT and ransomware, not a good combination. Hey Jim, I understand you're looking into a story about some new ransomware that's out there. This one, it's a, it's a new family of ransomware called Cryptor. This is a piece of ransomware that targets um, NAS devices, network attached storage devices. It was discovered attacking a particular model, it's a D-Link model that isn't available for sale anymore but it was a relatively popular model a few years ago, and it hasn't had a firmware update since 2016. This is a device that's basically no longer supported. So D-Link, the vendor, they haven't been patching, they haven't been releasing software, but people still own this, this stuff. Some people, unfortunately, make these available through port forwarding or put it directly on the internet. And if it's available to the internet, then it's possible to drop files on there and uh, get them to execute. And so this particular uh, piece of ransomware is an ELF binary, uh, the, the underlying operating system uh, on this D-Link was a stripped down Linux. And when it got on there, it just went through and uh, you know, as ransomware does, it encrypted lots of files using uh, public-private key encryption. So it is uh, somewhat of a concern. I, like I said, it's not the first time we've seen this. The last time around, it was, I believe, Synology Disk Station Manager NAS devices. But you know, we need to keep. Uh, keep track of these and make sure that we're protecting them, put a firewall in front of them so that they can't talk to the internet. It seems like a network attached storage is something you could have a real strict control list around. You know, it shouldn't need to, you know, unless you were trying to get to it from the internet, I'm not sure why you couldn't set up a pretty strict, you know, control list of where yeah. you're trying to get to your NAS from. Right? I'm gonna guess people just figure that Who's going to ever find it? Yeah. But <laughs> but if they watch the show, they know that right. it's going to be found probably in about five minutes from the time you expose it to the internet. Yeah. So don't ever assume that just because you expose something to the internet that nobody's going to find it. It will be found and probably exploited quickly. <laughs> so you need to be really careful about um, making sure you patch it, making sure uh, you're not exposing it to the internet in ways that uh, an attacker could unexpectedly compromise it. The thing I thought was kind of interesting about this is it's pretty smart, right, for a ransomware attacker to try to target something that is basically designed to store all of your important files, right? right? And network attached storage, that's its role. Right. So I already got the right thing I want. And these devices, I was just kind of looking here, there is a, uh, there's an undisclosed backdoor that is everybody knows about now, apparently. Yeah, disclosed. Which is probably what, how these things get compromised. If they're exposed to the internet, somebody you know, said, hey, there's a vulnerability for these. Let me just go pop them all yep. and uh, put this ransomware on there. So you know, to me, it's, it's interesting that somebody has, I mean, it's not a, a far stretch to think, I guess, if you're a bad guy, but to go after you know, a network attached storage and encrypt that you're probably going to have more success in um, extorting that that individual because there's probably that's where he kept all his important stuff or right. her stuff. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So important to be aware of and as well as, like you said, apply patches if they're available. And if they aren't available and you have a device that's old and it's kind of been discontinued support, be really cautious about yeah. exposing that in any way, shape, or form to something that could be, you know, people could get to. Because the vulnerability might get found and not be patched. So there's still no patches, Jim? Still no patches. Like I said, the, the device is not available for sale anymore. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if, if D-Link was going to go back and uh, update, you know, create a new firmware for it, but the most recent one as of a couple of days ago, 
for this device was one from 2016. It sort of shows you that the onus has to be on the user at some point because when you see signs that this is no longer a supported product, uh, you're really putting yourself in a bind if you continue to use that and especially when it's something that's exposed to the network.